And do you know in the last 35 to 40 years, we have learned more about the mind, more about the subconscious mind, more about the body, more about the mind-body connection than at any previous 2,000 years in our history. Look at the stuff we've learned. Look at the genome stuff that we've learned. Do you know that they are investigating right now proteins? They say six million proteins in the body. And when we know all the proteins in the body, we will be able to cure anything in the human being. Bit frightening, isn't it? Right? But that's where it's going. We've learned a lot in the last 35 to 40 years. One of the things that we've learned, I really use in, in, in some seminars, you know, it's really interesting, I think. Do you know, tears, you can have tears of sadness, can't you? Right? Tears of sadness, right? You can have also tears of happiness, can't you? Yeah? Well, do you know that they have a different chemical constitution? So in other words, we're doing something different to our body when we have tears of sadness and tears of joy. Well, now that, coupled with another research scientist, is fantastic information. You see, emotion is memory for the subconscious mind. Emotion is memory. This was proved in 1971. And what, what, what was actually proved was emotion is not only involved with memory, it is the very basis in which memory takes place. Now, when you think about that, right, like you could go back in your mind right now, here's a quick demonstration of it, and you could go back to a Something that you didn't like, something that was trauma, something that was adversity, something that was... Okay, don't go any further. You probably got it anyway. Don't, right, don't think about it anymore, right? But you go there. You've got it. You know what the occasion was. You know what hurt. You know all that sort of thing, right? And I could also ask you to go back to a really fantastic event in your life. Right? You go back to maybe when you were riding your two-wheeler bike for the first time, or maybe your first kiss, or maybe a fantastic result at, uh, uh, in sport or, or at school or something like that. You know? There are so many good, joyous occasions in our mind, and they'll come up. Right? Now, how did you remember them? That's the key. How did you remember them? I mean, to remember either the negative event or the joyous event, did you have to tell other people about them? Did you have to write about it and write about it again and again? Did you have to make a, a mind map about it? Did you have to do all those sort of things to remember it? No. It's stuck fast, isn't it? It's right there. So in other words, the emotion of the event made it stay in your Memory. So now, right, now, if we can remember with both negative emotion and we can remember with positive emotion, do we use negative emotion to enhance imprinting on our memory? The answer is no, because of the tears stuff. Tears of sadness, tears of joy, different chemical constitution. We know we're doing something different to our body with negative stuff, and it doesn't help us feel good, the negative stuff, right? So therefore, we only use positive, right? Positive, joyous memory connections, okay? To enhance memory within the subconscious mind. So that's something that came out of this science a long, long, long time ago.